Hello everyone, today we're going to be installing Hammer++ for CSGO, though this should work for other games that Hammer++ supports, but since Hammer++ was just released for CSGO, that's what we're going to be installing it on. Start by heading over to the Hammer++ download section, I'll leave a link in the description. Once you're there, click on the game that you want Hammer++ for, and then click save to start the download. I'll extract the Hammer++ CSGO folder from inside the downloaded zip file onto my desktop. Next, we'll need to navigate to our CSGO install directory, which should be inside your Steam Apps common folder. If it's not here, you've probably installed CSGO somewhere else. You'll notice that there's a bin folder next to the CSGO folder. This is the bin we want. Don't confuse that with the bin inside CSGO that contains client DLL and server DLL. That's the wrong bin folder. Going into the correct bin folder, that is again next to the CSGO folder, we should see hammer.exe. If you don't see hammer.exe, you need to make sure that you have CSGO SDK downloaded and then load regular hammer at least once and then close it. Launching normal hammer creates some files that hammer++ needs. With normal hammer closed, we'll want to copy the hammer++ folder and hammer++.exe into the Counter-Strike Global Offensive bin folder. When you see hammer++.exe in the same place as hammer.exe, you know you've installed it to the right place. If you still have the SDK open, you can close it, and then I'm going to right click and drag the hammer++.exe onto my desktop. I'll select create shortcut here, and then this will be the shortcut that we use to load Hammer++, not the SDK. We can double click this shortcut to launch Hammer++ for the first time. Hammer++ by default will check for updates when you launch it. If one is found, it will show you your current version number and the new version number. You can then click yes to automatically download the new version. The update process is extremely similar to the installation process. Once you download it, you'll get a zip file that has a bin folder in it with hammer++.exe and a hammer++ folder inside of it. You'll want to close hammer++ and then once again browse to your Counter-Strike Global Offensive bin folder. Once in the correct bin folder, you'll just want to overwrite the hammer++ folder and hammer++.exe with the ones that were just downloaded from the update process. Click replace the files in the destination to overwrite all of them, and once the file copy is finished, Hammer++ has been updated. You can then load Hammer++, and you should no longer be prompted for an update. Once Hammer++ has finished loading, you can go to Help About and verify that the build number has been set to the new downloaded version. Let's take a look inside of Tools Options at the new Hammer++ tab. There's a whole bunch of new settings here to help curate your experience, where my favorite has to be anti-aliasing to help smooth out some jaggies in your 3D viewport. I encourage you to look at most of the settings in here, as there's a lot of fine-tuning that you can do. Changing some settings in this menu will require you to restart Hammer++. If you look inside of Tools and Keybind Editor down at the bottom, there's a new Keybind Editor that will allow you to change pretty much every hotkey that Hammer has to offer. This is also a great resource to review to see what new tools and features have been added to Hammer++. Some default hotkeys have changed. Changing some keybinds requires you to restart Hammer++. Fikul brought back the classic error model into the CSGO version of Hammer++. Thank you. By default, Hammer++ will show you a highlighted selection of objects through walls. This was inspired from Source 2. If you don't like this feature, you can disable it under Tools, Options, Hammer++, Render Selections Through Geometry. Hammer++ will display the current 2D skybox for your level, and you can disable it with this button up here. If you change the 2D skybox in your map properties, it will also update live. Using this toggle up top, you can disable draw of tool textures including the skybox. This will let you more easily visualize what the 2D skybox looks like. 
You can now easily convert a selection to an instance by going to Tools, Create Instance from Selection, or alternatively, you can right click on your selection and click the same button to turn your current selection into an instance. Just type a name and hit OK and Hammer++ will convert the selection into an instance and place it into your map. Another new instance feature is Edit Instance Preview. This will let you edit the instance while keeping the rest of the level placed around the instance. This is useful for if you need parts of the instance to match up with the rest of the level that it is being placed in. Hammer++ will allow you to preview your 3D skybox in the 3D viewport using this toggle up here. For this to work, your 3D skybox needs to be an instance. So I'll select my 3D skybox and then right click on it and hit create instance from selection. I'll name it 3D Sky and click OK. I'll also want to ensure that the sky camera entity is inside this instance. I'll go back to my main level and hide all of my skybox brushes with the show tool texture and then enable 3D Skybox to see it built around my level. One of the killer features of Hammer++ is the lighting preview found under Camera 3D Lighting Preview. This little window will open and you can click Full Bake to see what your level will look like in Lighting Preview. By default, dynamic updating is enabled, meaning if you move a light around in your map, it will update in the 3D viewport in real time. This also works if you change the color of a light as well. To go along with the new lighting preview, it's even easier to tweak light values. With a light selected, you can hit the C key on your keyboard to bring up the color browser. This will allow you to change values on lights really easily and quickly. The slider down at the bottom represents the intensity of the light. If we open that back up, we can also see that we have a palette on the right to store frequently used colors for our level. We also have the option of selecting the last used color as represented by this blue block here, along with a whole slew of new input values such as hex, hue saturation value, and good old RGB. Now that we have that green color saved in our color palette, I can go over to these other lights here and then hit the color picker, select the color from the palette, and hit OK. Another useful toggle is the Show Editor Only Objects toggle. This will hide things like spotlight models, light icons, or other editor-only objects, which will let you clean up your viewport to better see your level. If you open the Object Properties and then right-click on a key value, it will reset that value to the default for that entity. This is useful if you copy and paste entities a lot like I do. You can now use the clipping tool on brushes that have overlays applied without them being destroyed. Hammer++ will automatically add new brush face IDs to any info overlays that are on brushes that have been clipped. Hammer++ stores vertex information for brushes inside of what it calls Vertices Plus. These are the absolute values that the vertices were at when the VMF was saved. You may have noticed that on regular Hammer, more complex brush geometry will shift around slightly due to how Hammer reads back these brush datas every time the map is loaded. This is no longer an issue in Hammer++. Hammer++ supports hot reloading and loading of assets, which is useful for if you like to make changes on the fly, you can easily see them inside of Hammer as you make them. Hammer++ also supports the playback of material proxies inside of your 3D viewport. It also allows hot reloading of these so you can more easily fine tweak their values inside of Hammer instead of dealing with reloading the materials in game. There's now a new transform gizmo that you can get to by pressing the X key to first get to the old transform menu and then the new transform gizmo. You can move on a single axis or move on two axes at once like most modern editing tools allow you to do. Of course, you can still shift drag out copies of the currently selected object. With the gizmo active, you can right click to switch between transform, rotate, and scale gizmos, which will allow you to much more easily edit and place geometry inside your level. Using this toggle at the top, you can switch between the local pivot and the world pivot for an object for more fine-tuned placement.
with one of the rotation modes enabled, you will get a new pivot point enabled by this toggle up here. This is a essentially working pivot represented by this circle in the 2D views and that cross in the 3D views. When enabled, the props and objects will rotate around this new pivot point. You can even use this new working pivot with the paste special menu to quickly place many, many props in a radius around a specific point. Make sure you have use pivot from selection tool as rotate origin, fill out how many and how much rotation, and then hit OK. If you click and drag your mouse, it'll automatically select any object that passes underneath it. However, if you hold control, you can quickly select multiple adjacent objects. There's now also a physics simulation tool to aid in placing props and objects quickly around your level. If we select a bunch of objects and then hit toggle simulation on these barrels, they should explode into glorious fashion. If we're not quite happy with how they've laid out, we can just click and drag to kind of fling them around and place them how we want. If we want to turn off some of the collision models, we can use the debug checkboxes. This can also be helpful if you're experiencing oddities with the physics sim. Another useful option during physics simulation is sleep objects until touched. These will keep objects essentially asleep until we touch them with our mouse. This will allow us to more easily simulate physics on specific objects in an order that we see fit. And of course, you can still throw them around with your mouse. Physics simulation also works on brushes. Hammer++ also features a brand new and shiny prop selector. We can see many props at once, allowing us to easily see what assets we have at our disposal. You can also rotate, zoom, and pan around on each of these previews. If you want to see a specific model larger, you can zoom in and out with the slider at the top. Just like the model browser, the particle browser has also been updated to allow you to more easily preview particle systems. Once a particle system is selected, it will automatically begin to play that particle effect inside your 3D viewport. You can use the draw particles toggle to completely disable particles. Alternatively, you can enable render selected particles only in combination with render particle systems. This will only draw particles that are selected in your 3D viewport. Fairly often, you'll color props to get unique variations of them in your level, you can now disable entity render effects with this toggle up here. You can also select props and hit the C key to bring up the color selector to quickly color props as well. We're able to preview our fog controller settings inside of Hammer once we place a fog controller and make sure our camera mode is on either 3D textured or 3D lighting preview. Changing settings on the fog controller will also update the fog preview in real time inside of the 3D viewport. You can now preview ropes inside of Hammer++ as well. Once we select the target for my move rope, we can see that it springs to life. If we update the slack value, it also jumps to life in real time as well. For all you brush warriors out there, Hammer++ now sports a new polygon tool that will allow you to create arbitrary brushes on the fly. When creating a brush, you'll notice that the line is either red, signifying that you're working on creating an invalid brush, or yellow, meaning that the brush is valid and convex and you're good to go. Once you're ready to create your new weird brush shape, just go ahead and press enter. The Vertex tool will now tell you in real time when you're about to create an invalid brush by highlighting which brush face is going to become invalid in red. It will also show you when an invalid brush will become valid by unhighlighting that face in red as well. By default, the clipping tool will now show you the dimensions of the two sides of the brush you're about to create. The clipping tool now works more like a slice plane, allowing you to define three points in space to create more complex and arbitrary shapes with every cut. There's now also a new merge option under Tools Merge, which will allow you to join multiple brushes together. This allows you to tack more brushes onto an existing brush, or even use the polygon tool to tack an even weirder brush onto an existing brush inside of your level. 
The sound browser has now been updated to have a volume slider, so you can now listen to sounds without wanting to die. It also now has native support for OGG and MP3 files inside of it. With objects selected, you can go into Tools, Move Objects, Nearest Floor, and it will automatically place those props on the nearest floor object. Alternatively, and even cooler, you can go to Move Objects, Nearest Floor, Aligned to Normal, and it will automatically place those props normal to the surface that they are going to be placed on. I haven't even covered all of the features of Hammer++ here in this video. I highly encourage you to go check out Feikul's website on Hammer++ so you can see for yourself how much love he has poured into this old ancient editor. You can also support him on Kofi if you think he deserves it, which he absolutely does. Thank you Feikul for bringing this fantastic tool to Counter-Strike GO and to the community. Thanks for watching and happy mapping.